talk a little bit about prayer. And if you are, are a Christian who's been around so long, you believe in prayer because you've prayed and you've had these prayers answered. If you're a Christian who's been around maybe a little bit longer and you observe things and put two and two together, you've had some prayers answered and you've had some prayers not answered. And if you're honest, I think you'll find that most prayers are not answered. Again, you got to be honest. Most prayers are not, unless you simply don't pray that way. Maybe you don't ask for a lot, which is fine. I know a lot of Christians don't ask for a lot. When I was in religion, I didn't ask for a lot. But I did notice that the percentage of things that got answered in the way we wanted them to be answered was very small. And that always bothered me because we're talking about God here, the creator of the universe. And in the world, when I want something, when I need something, when I just decide to do something, it seems like the odds are better. Yeah, I definitely experience failure in things I try in the world, but I can structure things in such a way or pursue certain things that my odds are really good, at least way over 50%. I know I can try some pretty crazy things too and my odds go way down, but if you go within reason, you can have a high, fairly high success rate in life. You're still going to have a lot of failure, I understand that. But God, as the creator, compared to that, you would think, well, he, mu he would have a much higher success rate. After all, you know him, and as a Christian, you believe he's living within you. So, why don't we have a much higher success rate? We're the ones with God dwelling within us. I don't know if you ever thought about that, but I just want you to think about that. I'm not claiming I'm going to get full understanding of that or give it to you. I just want us to think about it because as the people of God, that should be something we should consider. As I said in a recent video, what I tend to observe is that people just pray for everything and hope that something gets through. And some gets answered. And every time something happens, they say, God did it. And if they're asked, why didn't he do the other things? He says, well, he's God. He can do whatever he wants. And in that video, I was, I was emphasizing the relational nature of prayer. That prayer is about two people getting to know each other. So we should be trying to understand his perspective as opposed to simply asking for things that we want from our perspective. Because even if you get these so-called prayers answered, if he just does it whenever you ask him, you're not going to know him anymore. And these are all temporal things for the most part anyway. So when you're praying, and like I say, I'm, I'm speaking to, I guess, a couple groups, fairly new Christians to Christians who have been around a long time, and you see that there's not a high percentage of these prayers going through that tends to create this kind of offhand thing oh pray for this would you brother hey sister would you pray for this oh I'm praying for you and we say it in such an offhand way it's easy to to end it there we just say it I've done it I don't I don't think I'm unusual I don't think everyone prays every prayer they say they're gonna pray and I don't think Everyone prays every prayer that someone else asks them to pray. It's, it's because we know from experience that the things just don't tend to happen. But yet we're talking about the creator of the universe. Shouldn't he be a more sure thing, to put it that way, than our efforts in the world, as I described earlier, that our efforts in the world can have a fairly high percentage of success, well over 50%. For most of us, if we're not just all out, crazy-eyed dreamers, and yet God can't? Well, we know it. It's not a matter of He can't. So what is it? Is it, is it the religious point of view that, hey, just ask for as much as you can think of and be happy for what you get? Or is it we ask in error? 
And again, the, the religious answer to asking an error is develop your faith. Have more faith. Because if you believe, he will do it. Which I used to believe in, and I just don't see it anymore. I find that so foreign, it's, it's odd to even think that I did believe it. And I wanted to believe more and more that my belief would cause God to do X, Y, Z. I really believe that. And I don't think it was rare. I don't think it's unusual. I think many, if not most Christians to this day, believe that. If they could have great faith, they could cause God to do something. And I know there, there are scriptures that people use that indicates that. They say, see, Jesus said it right there. If you had this faith, you could cast a mountain into the ocean. The sea. I think he said the sea. But anyway, why aren't these things happening? Are we asking in error? Is that the problem? I believe it is. I believe it is. Because I think there's something else he wants. And we have to believe what he's already done and said. Our understanding, that is my wife and I, our understanding of the message of God through the New Covenant is... That God himself came here. He became a human being. The creator of all that is. The heavens and the earth and everything that is in them. That creator, that one, the one and only, came here as the man, Christ Jesus. And he gave his life. Now, that is something to get. That is something to receive. That is some kind of blessing that I couldn't even think of. If he hadn't done that, I don't know if I ever would have thought of that. Maybe you would have thought of that. I wouldn't have thought of it. And no one then apparently thought of it. Not as enemies and not as friends. They couldn't understand it. They couldn't comprehend it. No one was praying for that. They were praying for a conqueror. Some saw him as this conqueror and they were waiting for him to conquer away. So let's get at it, Jesus. Let's see that fire from heaven. And others were, no, you're not the one. We don't like you. So we're going to conquer you. We're going to kill you. So that to me indicates the problem. That there's a misunderstanding that we ask in error. Because we don't believe. My tripod is failing. But we don't believe what he said, and what he's done. We don't believe that our Creator came here to give us himself. Because what does it mean to have God give himself to you? Because he not only gave himself for you, he gave himself to you. So now, because of what he's done, we have the Spirit of God here dwelling, not only alongside us, but in us. That's why Paul could say in Ephesians 1.3, that we have been given all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies with Christ. We are with Him because we are in His heart. Those of us who have put our trust in Him, who believe Him, we are with Him and He is with us. That is everything. There is nothing more to be asked for after that. And when I say that, I don't mean don't ask for things. My wife and I ask for things. We do. But they're not in addition to that. They're not beyond that. Part of the reality of living in this world, this fallen world, things happen. We ask for certain things because our heart just cries out. You just can't help it. But it's not a matter of, boy, I sure hope I believe enough so that he'll do this. Because I, I understand I already have everything. I am in the kingdom. I am a fellow citizen with the saints of God. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing Ephesians 2.19. The point I want to make, though, is that if you already have everything, you have no business asking for things in the same way you would receive what you already have. Because life is about, now that you're saved, I mean, it's about receiving what you already have. And we cannot bear all of it. That's what he said to the disciples. You cannot bear it yet. But he was giving them as much as they could take. And later on they would receive his spirit literally coming into them. And they would 
accelerate in their growth and their maturity and their understanding of who their God is because their God was with them. God with us, Emmanuel, with them, inside them, teaching them, showing them what they already had, what he already gave them. So prayer isn't about petitioning God to do things that, that he would do and he knows is good and he's just waiting to be asked in the right way with the proper amount of faith or the right sacraments or the right amount of people or enough persistence throughout the years. That is not what it's about because he's just and he's good and he will do the good thing always, no matter what. If we never prayed for it, he would still do the good thing. You just ask yourself that. Is there a good thing that should be done that God wouldn't do if we didn't ask for it? He does things all the time that we don't ask for, that we don't even think of. And we see, wow, that was amazing. But we don't seem to want to allow for the fact that it is a fallen world and people do make their own choices. People make their own choices, and we can't pray against that. We shouldn't. I shouldn't pray against another person's will. Should I tell God that he should talk to someone that he's been trying to reach for years? No, I think I should pray to God so that I would understand better, and that maybe I could communicate with this person better in a way that they could hear me. But to presume upon God that he's not doing something that I know he should be doing. I know those aren't the words that we use, but that's the only takeaway you can get when you look at it from that standpoint. There's something good. It needs to be done. And God doesn't simply do it until I generate enough faith, enough persistence, enough sacraments, enough fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord all praying along. There's, there's no standard for that. There's nowhere in the Bible that says you meet this certain standard and then God will. No, God knows what to do and when to do it and how to do it. What we should do is get in touch with who that one is who always does the right thing. That's what prayer is really about. In Jesus' name, amen.